And welcome back. As we as we mentioned before, we're joined by Miss Jenny for Brook It Down with Miss Jenny. And of course, today we're talking all about empathy. But of course, empathy as it relates to children, teaching them what it means to be empathetic, to show empathy. And so we're really glad to have you here on set today, this Friday. It's a beautiful Friday, um, Miss Jenny. It welcome. Is. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. You know, morning, it's, always, it's always nice to have you, Jenny. Reason being is because not only are you that good, you're also somebody who actually touches lives. So we listen, we understand, and that's the sentiment we get from folks when we're out there. Mm -hmm. We can't wait for Jenny because she will say <laughs> something that touches our lives. And she really broke it down. Yeah, she broke it down, <laughs> correct, I tell you, man, for real. But Jenny, uh, this morning, of course, uh, it's a fun Friday, that much we could say. Um, it's definitely a topic that a lot of folks, especially for us men, uh, mm -hmm. would have to would have to listen That's to the double understand. Pink today. Hmm? <laughs> pink today. It's about, no, 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 the reason why I say this is because empathy is one of the words yeah. that we always hear in the household, yeah. especially yeah. from the wives. But yeah. it's about the kids today. So talk to us about it. Empathy. Well, the thing what is, is empathy? The thing, empathy, we talk about it is being able to walk in the person's shoes. Mm -hmm. Now that sounds crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that I need to be able to understand Try to un try to understand what you're going through yeah. and communicate that to you. Yeah, it's it's not just about trying to understand, but it's actually getting the other person to mm -hmm. see that I really do understand. Mm -hmm. See, if we teach children about empathy, children wouldn't go out and bully. You're right. Yeah. Children wouldn't go out and and make fun of other people yeah. or throw things at the homeless. Yeah. But it has to start. You as the parent, you have to start. You know, mm -hmm. fostering that in children very, very young. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because children yeah. who grow up with empathy become adults who, mm -hmm. who have empathy. Thank you. Yeah. And, and that's what's so important. But it's not too late. You know, you can always start wherever. Yeah. The thing is, is that um, if a child has already turned, what, 12, they said the personality is already formed, mm -hmm. it's hard to turn them. Yeah. Right? But it's so important with little kids, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about that. I have five little um, pointers, you pointers know, yeah. for parents mm -hmm. okay. and for kids, because I know some of the kids are not in school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm hoping that they're they're watching they're TV tuning. and we can talk about some of these things. Um, my first picture, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. is showing empathy. Yeah. It's you know the the little kids see a kid crying and they're yeah. both coming over and finding out. I see mm -hmm. little kids. Some of them naturally yeah. have it. Sure. Because they've, they've seen it modeled by their parents. You know, it's just about to say, because when you, uh, one of the best ways to eventually uh, feel and then again uh, put yourself in a shoe mm -hmm. is when you see or feel how mommy does it for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And then we tend to carry it on as kids going into adults. So right. very important that we mentioned that a while yeah. ago. Because, yeah. and I was, I, I wanted to ask, do you think that we're doing enough in terms of showing our kids empathy in today's day? In, in today's we're not. Mm. I mean, I, we're in, and I'm going to show you in a minute, mm -hmm. we're in the age of... Yeah. Selfie. Selfie. Yeah. <laughs> the me. The me. Me. Mm -hmm. me. You know? Mm. We are so in love with uh, me. Ourselves, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and really and truly, I think right now that that's... It's, we, we really have to temper it. We mm -hmm. have to start talking to our children about yeah. that because we're totally forgetting the other people in the, in the world and we impact and other people impact us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let me start this before our yeah. producer starts <laughs> getting out of here. Let's get on with it. <laughs> so I put, uh, I put here um, a definition of empathy which says empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. Mm -hmm. That's important. I like the, the fact that it's a two-part thing. It's understanding it and then sharing sharing, sharing it. Because you yeah. can understand it and not be able to relate to that person mm -hmm. at all. But the sharing allows for that. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I also put, it's a, self, a sense of self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Putting oneself in another person's shoes. Mm -hmm. It's actually looking out there at the homeless person and go, oh my God, there but for the grace of God go I. Yeah. Right? Because seriously, mm -hmm. if you understand yeah. that we're pretty much all of us one paycheck away from becoming that. Yeah. One right? choice away. One bad choice. Right. One mm -hmm. bad choice. Seriously. And, and so if we can remember that, then you don't look at people or look down on people. Mm -hmm. You actually look at people with love yeah. and try to understand what happened. Yeah. 
okay? Mm -hmm. Being able to regulate my own emotional responses. That's a part of empathy also. That's mm -hmm. difficult. It is difficult, but it's things, again, you have to yeah. start young teaching children. Right. So I go, we live in the age of the selfie, mm. the ubiquitous symbol of narcissism, <laughs> 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 the overwhelming, omnipresent yeah. symbol of narcissism. Mm -hmm. Kids are actually learning just about selfie. Yeah. Right? How to hold the self. camera. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's about me, me, me. Yeah. yeah. And we really have to temper that and talk with children. Okay? You know, and especially for, uh, and I'm not knocking anybody here, but uh, when there's a one child family, then, you know, the world surround, and it's just nature for somebody to uh, get so indulged or love their child. But at the same time, you need to teach them how to share, because I think this is a part of it. When you feel that life is just about you, you tend to not share that empathy with others because it's all about you. Mm -hmm. So I think this is one of the this is one of the ways of how you could start, especially for those of us who, like in my household, there is only one child. And because there is only one child, my child most of the time would think that life is about. But so we try to share, especially after conversations like this one. <laughs> we try to share with her that you know what? In the world there are other people who would need. Yeah. And so you do have to be cognizant of that one of the things you do is you get the child to go through their toys mm -hmm. and things they're not using. Yeah. Talk to them about sharing that with children who don't have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You take those toys over to like the the um, the, the child care center, the child, yes. places like that. The have hospital. the child take it mm -hmm. and have the child see that these children don't have. Yeah. Or neighbors who might not have. Mm -hmm. Right? Because yes, we do tend to want to give the child everything, but we really have to teach the child that there are things that you don't need and there are people who, who have a need yeah. and you can share some of these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are good things, yeah to, yeah, to teach the child about sharing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Take the child, I, I, keep, I say this all the time, mm -hmm. take the child, you go volunteer and take the child with you mm -hmm. yeah. so that they see. Go one Sunday and go help feed, um, feed hungry people. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, go down to Salvation Army and volunteer there to help mm -hmm. with the children. I, I, this conversation is just so juicy. Like, <laughs> Like seriously, <laughs> but uh, what about uh, you've got two, three, uh, four children in the home, but with the age of technology and the selfie and everybody having their own device, uh, uh, device their device, uh, and not chit chatting with each other, then again, the selfie comes in. Do you think that it's uh, uh, even though there are amount of children in the home, do you think that? today's technology interrupt with the empathy, especially having those children in the That's home. That's why it's incumbent on parents and teachers yeah. to ensure that you continually use teachable opportunities, teachable, yeah, teachable moments. moments. Mm -hmm. Whenever a child, you know, you, there's, always, there's always things that you can take and show the child, you know what, this right here, what, we, what you're doing. Yeah. We need to be communicating. Mm -hmm. Yes, we all have your devices, but guess what? That device gets turned off when we sit down for dinner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That device gets turned off when we sit for family time. Mm -hmm. And that's assuming that you are doing these mm -hmm. things. Yeah. It's really important that you have at least one meal together mm -hmm. without the accoutrements, mm -hmm. right? And, and I emphasize this is so important because this is when children are, learn your values. Yeah. I mean, growing up, I remember we, as, as a young kid, we mm -hmm. always had breakfast together. You came home mm -hmm. all the way from Palatine, you go home for lunch, and we all sat down and had lunch mm -hmm. together. Wow. We've lost those things, yeah. and we need to get them back. Because we've gotten so busy. But you have to make time. Yeah. You, yeah. Because if you're talking about building family and family relationships, it's important to find at least one. Yeah, yeah. I know everybody's working. Yeah. But find at least one meal together. Mm -hmm. And that's at those meals, that's where you find out what's happening with your children. Are right. they being bullied? Are they bullying people? Are they bullying people? That's <laughs> right. really important that you mentioned. Yeah. That. yeah. And, and that's when you sit down and you start finding out these kinds of things. And you talk about things. And you also, what you're doing is you're teaching your child by modeling. Mm -hmm. Right. You're modeling. Mm -hmm. Let me run through before she calls me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Seize everyday opportunities to model. The, number one for, exactly. for parents. Mm -hmm. Seize everyday opportunities to model and bring out sympathetic feelings mm. for other people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for your children, as you're walking, you're going down the street. Um, oh, my battery's gone down me before we get done. <laughs> 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 um, if, if, if you get out there, right, and... Yeah. Um, 
you're walking along, you see homeless people begging. Mm -hmm. You want to talk to your child about things like that. Yeah. You, yeah. See, you see people with mental problems. You mm -hmm. want to talk with the children about things like yeah. that. Two, help kids discover what they have in common with other people. Yeah. You really want to let your child know what you, ha what you have in common yeah. with the person who became homeless, mm -hmm. with, the per with children out there who are walking with their, their shoes all tattered and torn. Mm -hmm. Because they, the thing is, is that children want to make fun of other kids. Mm -hmm. And so for them to understand that, yes, w your mom has a job, dad has a job, and we're able to provide for you. These children may not, but we have to understand that the reasons that this happens. Mm -hmm. Use all these teachable moments. Right. Okay. And the fact that they didn't ask for that, especially children, mm -hmm. don't ask to be in the right. situation where they're we want to teach empathy versus sympathy. Yeah. Sympathy is, I feel sorry for feel you, sorry for you. Yeah. so I will do for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the thing is, is that we don't want to do for others what they can and should be doing for themselves. Mm -hmm. And we want to teach children that the difference between empathy is, I am in here with you, I will do everything I can to help to push you along, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to do it for you. Yeah. I mean, it's important to teach that. Yeah. I'm trying to get through these and then we can talk about Definitely. that. Definitely. Four, develop a feelings vocabulary. I love that. It, I, talk, I talk to kids all the time mm -hmm. who only know anger. I, uh, I'm mad. I'm mm -hmm. upset. I'm angry. Right. That's the only thing that they, the words, those are the only feeling words they can come up with. Mm -hmm. And so as parents, it's so important to build a different feelings language. Mm -hmm. Teach them about fear. Boys can feel fear. Okay? We always want to... We always want to um, teach, teach the girls about it's, you know, crying and things like this, but we don't want to teach the boys. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to teach the boys. Do you, uh, would you say that uh, it, it that is That it's okay to cry? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't want boys to be wimps. We don't want boys to be all kinds of things. Yeah. Okay. Very important that we build feelings language for both children, mm -hmm. boys and girls. And that feelings don't have a gender. That's something, that's something that you need not. to teach. And you see, we, as mothers, we're the ones responsible for that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. We have to teach, because men tend to want to throw the boys in the air and the boys to be rough, and the <laughs> boys are not supposed <laughs> to have any kind of, you're yeah. not supposed Feelings to cry, you're not yeah. supposed you to have feelings. You, yeah. Right? That's wrong. We, we, that's why you have tear ducts. Even yeah. though you're a boy, you have a tear duct too. Mm -hmm. And okay. a brain. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Deep conversation, <laughs> loving every second. And then the last, the last one will be promote gratitude. Mm. Yeah. It's so important to teach your children to say thank you, to be grateful for the things they have. You work hard, you provide for your child, but that child has to understand that the things that you buy for them, that they need to be grateful for it. Of course. Mm -hmm. And that they also pass that on. Yeah. Pass it on. Mm -hmm. And th I think the, for me, this is the most important one, yeah. Pro you know, promoting this attitude of gratitude mm -hmm. and making sure that we teach this to the children. Mm -hmm. Now we can chat. So wow. this, if this thing dies, we've gone through the five, five uh, sets. Well, I have a question about how it relates, as it relates to social norms. Like mm -hmm. for instance, and I have a specific example in my head where you go to a corner store and you have children yelling, Chani boy or Chani yala oh, one is, and then they fling down the money. Mm -hmm. and for me, it, I, it, it irks me. Yes. Yeah, it grinds my gears because they do it because adults do it, and I think that that does not show empathy for right. the person on the other side who might right. not be Chinese, who might be Taiwanese, mm -hmm. or might be a different, you know, um, uh, ethnicity. And how do you change that? How do you mold that kind of behavior, especially if it's not your child? You know, I, I, we have a Chinese. Chinese grocer downstairs, mm -hmm. an older lady, yeah. and that irks me. Yeah. I walked in and it, this little tiny little thing must have mm. been about six. Walking like China yeah. Ooh, yeah. I turned around and I said, I said, sweetie, come here. Look at that lady. Mm. Does she look like a gal to you? Right. I said she's older than you are. You can call her auntie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But please don't come in here and yell Chinese girl. I said, plus, that's very racist. How do you exactly. like it to call you black, blacky boy? Black girl. Blacky, yeah. No, blacky boy oh. or blacky girl. Mm -hmm. I mean, how would you, how would you like that? Mm -hmm. Right? And so he looked at me. But the thing is, there were lots of people in the store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know, in about two, three weeks, everybody was calling the lady auntie. 
she le in fact she named her store auntie <laughs> 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 but the thing is is that when we see it any of us see it we need to correct people and yeah. let them know that it's very racist and it it's is very extremely rude. racist mm -hmm. and it's rude it is so rude and you 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 have these little children yeah. talking to an adult like that mm -hmm. and and really we really need to continue to talk to children mm -hmm. these are folks who have come from another country yeah is this the impression we want to give people and some about of them have grown are. up here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And on the topic of uh, uh, growing, uh, of course, raising boys and letting them feel or, or with the empathy and letting them know that it's okay for them to cry. Mm -hmm. Growing up, you know, uh, growing up, especially when it comes to the whole old school uh, situation, mm -hmm. Men were thought that they are to be macho, that they are actually, uh, you're supposed to be standing up for yourself. There is no need to cry. There is no need to. Show so feeling. for our generation today, we actually grew up with it, seeing it. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's very important for them to let out their emotion. How do we do this in the, in the household? You see, this is why we have men will att not attempt, men will complete suicides a lot more than women. Mm. Because we will talk to each other, we will cry. Yeah. And, uh, we, we don't even have to really know another woman. We meet another woman and usually women are easy to listen. They will listen. Mm -hmm. And so we have opportunity, we take opportunities to talk about things. But our boys, and, and we're guilty too as women. We don't want our boys to cry, we don't really want our boys to be anything but macho boys, mm -hmm. right? And we deprive them. In fact, if we see a boy pick up a doll, you know, everybody freaks out, oh, my child's mm -hmm. gonna turn gay, or, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy. Where do boys learn how to be tender? Mm -hmm. Where do they learn to be tender? If they're not learning in the home. Mm. So why are we freaking out if they pick up a doll and they're tender with a doll? They need to know how to do that because later on when they're dating and they meet women, mm. how do they know how to be tender? And this, you see, is some of the problems that they have where, where we, we as women, we say, huh, I wish this man had learned how to hug and he learned how to be just cuddly and sweet to me. We didn't help to teach them when they were growing up. Right. And as men, if you have a boy child, it's really important that you give this child opportunities to be tender. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with a child picking up a doll, a boy child picking up a doll. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being able to look at that doll and learn, learn things. Girls pick up dolls, they cuddle the doll and they hug the doll. If a boy does that, man, we want to beat him out of his shell. And that's crazy. So what happens now uh, after we have taught our little boys, our young boys, how to become, how to, how to uh, have empathy and how to uh, shed tears when they feel emotion? What happens to the mind thereafter? Whose mind? The baby's the, mind? The, 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 the boy's mind? mind? The boy's mind. The male's mind. He's not going to turn gay. Mm -hmm. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. He's not going to turn gay because he cried. He won't. Yeah. He will, learn, he, he will he learn that it is okay to let those emotions out. This is why our boys have so many problems. So many problems. Mm -hmm. Then they don't want to go to counseling because that's not macho. Oh, yeah. Only, only, only girls go to counseling, mm -hmm. right? Only weak girls go to counseling, right? And it's crazy. We, we are messing up our males. We're mm -hmm. messing up our boys and our men because they grow up into men who hold back who they don't want to talk they don't want to express emotions they don't want to say i love you because oh my god that makes me less than a man mm. I, you know and i loving this loving this <laughs> because you know if or when what do we say what do we say to uh, our men who uh, eventually would develop that empathy because it's always said in a relationship i don't want to stray from the topic of empathy mm -hmm. but it's always said in the relationship that you are not as loving uh, as you used to uh, used to be what do you say to these guys who need to develop this love in their family in their relationship who weren't taught empathy as kids mm -hmm. who are not taught right who are not taught yeah. empathy as kids see um they really have to just take a risk mm -hmm. take a risk if, you, if you're able to have a relationship with a, with a lady, 
it's important that you hug, that you hold hands with her, that you tell her how you feel. Yeah. And if you don't have the feeling language, ask her to teach you. Mm. If you no, I mean, seriously, if you are in love with this girl, she needs to know that. And if we don't know that, guess what? We look at you and we're thinking, if this man can't show emotions or show me feelings, I don't think I need to be with him. Because mm -hmm. this is what my life is going to mm -hmm. be like. Mm -hmm. Not straight from the topic again. <laughs> But what do you say to us men who would tell their wives or their uh, loved ones, I am not going to counseling because that individual will tell you exactly what I'm telling you now. <laughs> that's a whole that's other show. A, that's always a whole other No, I ask the question because, you know, we find ourselves in situations like this. And I think that it, it, it also, uh, it also uh, means that we deprive ourselves of the empathy. Because we're not feeling the way you're feeling. We're not putting ourselves in the shoe. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm able to tell you, because I'm not putting myself in your shoe, I'm able to tell you, they want to tell you exactly where to tell you right now. Because we don't feel like you feel. This is why I'm asking, what do you say to these people? <sighs> That's a whole other topic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other topic. No, because seriously, our men, our men are so deprived. Yeah. A lot of our, our men do not, do not know how to share love. And really, they can't empathize. When they see us cry, when they see a, a, a woman cry, they're like, oh, lad, you're going to like cry all in tears. And, you know, oh they, they make fun of, of the fact they that women are it. able to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, is that we're healthier. Yeah. We are way healthier because we don't keep all that poison and toxin, toxin, and toxic stuff inside of us. And it Absolutely is toxic. Absolutely it's toxic. Mm -hmm. You know? But, but we, the women tend to, we don't do that. We are mm -hmm. going to find another woman. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. We're going to cry about it. Mm -hmm. Because we learned very early. And I think it's just by watching our mothers too. Mm -hmm. We learn about empathy very, very early. Right? We learn about experience. Pressing. We learn about feeling what that it's. It's like I can I can walk in and know that you're not you're, you're not feeling yeah. well just by your body language. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we learn that watching our moms, mm -hmm. right? And hearing our moms ask dad, yeah. you know what's going on? I hear something. And you guys, mm -hmm. and and again I blame us the women mm -hmm. because we're not teaching it to our boys. Exactly. And I think that you know like you're you're right when you say that every moment can be a teachable moment. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why for well I'm for parents why it's hard to to teach empathy is because they're relying solely on you're not for do that or you're for share or you're not for set you know it's all about the the the, the theory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, I'm telling I'm you. I'm telling you how to do it. Instead I'm right. showing you it when I'm going to when I'm in traffic, I'm not going to call the person who cuts me off a, a, a bleep bleep. Mm -hmm. Or I'm not going to say bad words towards mm -hmm. them because that is showing your, your child mm -hmm. that you're he, modeling. You're, you're modeling. Always, it. You're exactly. Always modeling. So, how do you encourage parents to be more present and cognizant of the fact that you need to be modeling it rather than telling it? See, that's the whole thing that also we need to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> because parents, honestly, yeah. parents. Parents really need to understand you are always on display if mm -hmm. you have little ones. Yes. And, and you know when you realize it, when you see them acting like you, uh -huh. you are? Mm -hmm. It's so important that you remember those children are always watching you. And even when they look like they're playing with something, I remember I, I, I like to use this example. My son was sitting in a class, right? And he's playing with his toys and we're, we're having classes. Mm -hmm. And the teacher asked a question and we're sitting there thinking about the answer. He piped up with the answer and it was the correct answer. We're like, he was listening the entire time, but he was playing. Right. Yeah. And a lot of times these kids appear to be playing, but, but they're, they're really very, very in, tune. in tune with what you are saying and doing. Mm -hmm. You are the primary model. Oh, yeah. When they go to school, teacher is the primary model. If you want your child to stop bullying or you want your child to stop acting out, it's how you behave at home. Yeah. What are you what are you doing that the yeah. child is learning from you? Mm -hmm. Really important stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this whole thing about empathy, mm -hmm. you're the model as the parent. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You're the one who teaches the child how to behave. Mm -hmm. If you are 
hitting each other and dads hit mom and yelling and yelling and screaming what do you think the child's going to go do at school or do outside hit and yell. yeah but, and we like to abdicate our response i don't know where i get up from mm. that's the phrase i don't know where i get up from but they're with you for most of their life mm -hmm. you are their model i always i always use the um the the whole analogy of the tarzan situation where these monkeys found or these apes found this uh this child and they taught him how to swing on trees trees and say oh we oh yo <laughs> you know so because you know the, we, we the, the kids actually do what they see yeah. now we do what we uh we do we actually try to model ourselves and not try to it's just natural it's, that's yeah. what you what you see is what you do what you teach them today will, will eventually tell who they will become it's future. not just what you see Mm. Children learn what they experience, yeah. mm -hmm. what they're seeing you do. So, you sitting here telling me not to smoke cigarettes, mm -hmm. but you're sitting smoking in front of me. What do you think I'm going to do when I grow up? Right. But, but the whole thing about that is do as I say and not do as I do. Not as I do. What do you say to these people? Your child is not learning what you tell them not to do the theory yeah. mm -hmm. they're not learning that they are watching you what you do and what you model for them is what they are going to do mm -hmm. Michelle, and i also um, think it's important to make the distinguishment of age um, and like for instance if an adult drinks a glass of wine at dinner and a kid sees that and wants to emulate that it's important to have that conversation with them that these are things that you experience as you get older your body right now is actually not capable of, of handling a glass, glass of wine. wine and i think parents tend to shy away from that explanation because they're afraid of the questions because kids are really good question askers they ask a lot of questions you know and it's important that you answer them yes it's important that if you don't know you let them know that it's i don't yeah. know but i'm gonna find out and come back, back. You. you don't know everything yeah so it's important that they see that it's okay to not know everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to go research it and give them an answer. And make sure you do, mm -hmm. right? But it's so important that we are careful what we're doing in front of these children mm -hmm. and the way we're behaving in front of the children. And if parents stop, if I'm serious, if parents stop and look at how their children are behaving, they are going to see and themselves, themselves in them. <laughs> what yeah. they're doing with these mm -hmm. children. You're not just like your mom, you're not just like your pop. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It com it comes out it comes yeah. out a lot, but uh, you know we're right there. We need to teach these children the right thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We need to and if you them. want to, it, and, and again going back to the whole thing about promoting gratitude, mm -hmm. right? If you are giving thanks, if you're giving thanks for things in front of your child, and you're teaching the child to be thankful for everything yeah. that they have not just spoiling them and giving them everything that they want yeah. because what you're doing is you're creating a little monster mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right you don't give a child everything they want mm -hmm. you give a child what they need yeah. they earn what they want I you know I've seen that example where you have parents who when the kids receive something they say say thank you and the child rem says thank you when they're told to say thank, to say you. thank but you otherwise they don't do mm -hmm. it but then you have the child who knows to say thank you on their own because right. that's something they see parents do exactly uh, and you, you see what i'm talking mm -hmm. about yeah. yeah how do you deal with having empathy and uh having gratitude and being bullied for it how do you deal with that you're bullied because you say thank Be, you because you're saying uh, to, he always <laughs> Then, uh, because you've got empathy, my goodness, you know, and uh, try to put yourself in the shoe. People bully you for these things. You get bullied for saying thank you, or for being nice, or for putting yourself in the shoe. He's soft. How do you deal? Yeah, you know, soft. Yeah. How do you deal with this? Because it it plays with the mind, and you mm -hmm. go home and try to take it out and say, you know what, my parents they're so soft, or my parents are they're just because being out there is the for, for a lot of people might be the biggest teacher there are a lot of things that you will see happen mm -hmm. so you're being bullied for having mm -hmm. gratitude and for having empathy for being how a, do you for being a good it? person mm -hmm. yeah how do you deal with it you have to talk to your child that being a good person is more important yeah than giving into the nonsense that somebody and you make sure that you talk to the school mm -hmm. because bullying should be zero tolerance in all schools there should be zero tolerance for it Mm -hmm. You make sure that you tell the principal, you talk to the people at the school. Mm -hmm. But you've got to encourage your child that, no, you take the high road. Mm -hmm. You always take the high road. Mm -hmm. 
You always be the fish that swims in the opposite direction. <laughs> Swim <laughs> upstream at all times. <laughs> I'm serious. Definitely. Because, yes, sometimes you may get bullied. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It builds character. Yeah, it does. When you're able to stand up and continue to have your convictions and follow through. Mm -hmm. I'm deadly serious about that. And as parents, you see, it's so important that you finding out these things mm -hmm. and be able to sit down and talk to your child. Mm -hmm. That you're taking the high road. Mm -hmm. Definitely. This makes for the better person. Yeah. You know. I wanted to talk just a little bit more about the, dis the, the distinction between empathy and sympathy. Mm -hmm. Because I hear it a lot, oh, you feel sorry, for, you just want to mm -hmm. feel sorry for that person. And mm -hmm. it's not feeling sorry for that person, it's mm -hmm. putting yourself in their shoes, taking a walk in their, in their, their life experience mm -hmm. so that you're able to relate. How do you, what are specific ways we can make that distinction that, that sticks, that resonates with people? Look, if I feel sorry for you, I want to go do something for you, that's yeah. sympathy. Yeah. If I feel the need to give you money, mm -hmm. that's sympathy. Mm -hmm. You see the people out there that, that are begging, mm -hmm. yeah. or begging for whatever reason, yeah. right? If you feel the need to go into your pocket and give them money, take, the, take your shirt off your back and give it to them, yeah. that's not empathy, mm -hmm. right? Empathy would be instead that I would go to the homeless shelter mm -hmm. and say, you know what, I want to make a donation mm -hmm. to help the people out there who are hungry. Yeah. That's empathy. Yeah. You're doing something to help to change the environment yeah. for these folks. Mm -hmm. Or I want to get into, um, into fundraising so that we are able to provide some assistance for the people out there to mm -hmm. get them into into a college or to find find some way of helping to get uh, another home for people to sleep places for people to sleep mm -hmm. that's empathy mm -hmm. so i get involved and i help to change the situation but not to go and feel sorry and give the person give them something if i'm feeling sorry for you that's sympathy mm -hmm. yeah. If I cry because I see what's happening yeah. to you, rather than be spring into action and, and say, okay, how can we make this better? Mm -hmm. Then that's sympathy. Can they coincide in any, in any you know, form? And I ask this because I haven't, when you, when you took talks about giving the shirt off your back, I, I flash back to when I was like about seven or eight and we were driving home from getting ice cream and <laughs> there was a lady on the street and she was naked. Like she had pants on and nothing else and she was walking around screaming yelling and we were on the opposite side of the street driving home and my dad stopped the car took his shirt off his back went to the lady and put the shirt on her and for me that was a level of of empathy mm -hmm. like understanding that where wherever this why this lady is doing that mm -hmm. mixed with sympathy you know covering her up can it coincide in, 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 and work together, kind of, the two? Your know, dad is a pastor. He, he is. <laughs> yeah, you know, he, he definitely, that would not yeah. really just be sympathy with him. Mm. There, he has a, a responsibility almost yeah, as yeah. a pastor to provide aid mm. to someone who he sees is clearly probably mentally yeah. ill, mm. who is exposed, mm. right? Yeah. So it would clearly, that would be one of the things um, of assisting, yeah. right? Yes, that it, there you would have, you know, a cross clear crossroads <laughs> meeting. <laughs> That's a good example of mm -hmm. them meeting. Yeah. What we don't want to teach children though is about sympathy. We want to, we want to, we want to build resilience. Yeah. We want children who know how to bounce back. We want children who are able to get out here and grow up to be good citizens. And the way we do that is to teach empathy very, very early model empathy very early. We don't want to spoil children and we definitely do not want to beat up on our boys. Yeah. We want our boys to be strong but we want them to have empathy and love mm -hmm. and be able to express that to their future girlfriends and wives. <laughs> definitely. So, we'll stop beat up the little boy when they pick up one And I think all of that is part of the human experience. Yeah. When, you're, when you're able to relate, you're a better human for it. Yeah. And I think that's what, what we all can aspire towards. Yeah. I must say, uh, excellent conversation. It teaches a lot, especially for us men, uh, in terms of how to, uh, you know, bring your child up with, with, the, with, the, with not the fear of them becoming, you know, on the other side or, 
you know, so very good conversation, and I'm sure that, uh, especially like, like I mentioned to you, whenever we have you on, Jenny, uh, Belize really welcomes your thoughts because it means a lot to us. So once again, thank you, Jenny. It's always <laughs> nice to have you, and of course, we'll see you on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For Tuesday. KTV the remix, of course, we get to see you at uh, one of the reruns, and it's always nice to see you when you say, "I love it." <laughs> And the new one that I like, wow, wow, wow. All right. That one. <laughs> so we'll actually, we'll actually get those and put them on as uh, ringtones for food. <laughs> Jenny, thank you once again. Coming up, My it's uh, a big yoga. It's a yoga workshop that will be held in San Pedro. We'll tell you more about that coming up in our final segment. Stay tuned. I want to appeal to make those little slips. It happens. You have to have a plan to manage your problems effectively. How are you going to do it? Fall off the horse, you jump right back on.